Right, well, we thought we'd have a, well, it's not, not too serious talk about streaming. I hope at the end of the day the message gets across about streaming, but uh, we thought we might do it uh, slightly light-heartedly. So we want a bit of audience participation, if we can. Okay. Now, you're in Yorkshire, so you can talk to each other. You don't, if people talk to you, you don't think you're funny, so you can, all right, you can talk to everybody here. So what we, what we want to do is we're going to pretend that we're actually uh, uh, maybe a committee of about 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and this, this, this mechanism for digital television is coming along. People are uh, talking about it going on uh, being the mainstream mechanism for delivering TV and even words like convergence and things are, are turning up. But we, the problem is, is we don't really know quite know what words to use. We've got some good ideas, but we're going to have a committee and you're going to be the committee. I'm going to be the democratic chairman, okay? Of course, as long as you agree with me, it'll be all right, okay? <laughs> But I can't use my own name. Peter's a bit... Peter means rock. And that's not very democratic, is it? So I thought I might borrow G0EWN's uh, first name, if that's all right. Gordon. And uh, this committee is meeting at 21 Downing Street, just down by the steelworks. Okay? Very democratic uh, meeting, so we hope you'll all um, join in. Um, what does, uh, and, and I kind of want you to tell me what you think. There's only one mic here, but we'll do our best to pick up what you have. If we mentioned a stream, what's the first thing that comes to mind with a stream? The word stream. Water? Flow. A brook, maybe? Flow, flow, flow seems to be. I quite like the idea of streaming. So shall we make a democratic decision that we'll, we'll, we'll vote for this stream idea, okay? A stream of data. What sort of stream? Well, when the digital systems were uh, first invented, obviously they put things into packets. So we've got packets of audio data. We've got packets of video data. We've probably got packets of uh, teletext type data. The television people quite like that. And, more, and much later, there were packets of housekeeping data that went with it all. Um, so let's say we go with this word stream. What happens if we uh, have more than one stream? Well, you know, I mean, when you combine these streams, what might we do with it? If you keep the analogy, which starts to fall apart a bit when you, when you carry on with the water idea of the streams going into a river. A river of data doesn't sound... We're not going to vote for that, are we? Anybody got any more ideas what we might uh, vote for? Uh, you know, this is 15 years ago, and you're inventing, and it's going to be stuck with the world for the rest of it, so... What are we going to go with when we combine the streams? Confluence. What a big word, Gordon. <laughs> no, it's far too long, that Gordon. But uh, I'm being democratic, but we can't have that. Okay. <laughs> Any more ideas? Streamer. Streamer. Ah, the voice of Yorkshire. Oh, we have to uh, give Peter a new title, I think, with the voice of Yorkshire. He com uh, edits Already our. Given that. Pardon? Are we? Oh, all right then. Okay. So, um, streamer. Well, Yorkshire Water manages streams. So, can we call Yorkshire Water a streamer? Well, it doesn't seem to sit very comfortably, does it? Really, a, a name that's to do with the equipment that would generate the stream. Don't know. Maybe streamer would fit. Shall we settle for that? You're not voting very noisily. <laughs> this is this is the democratic committee you're here. There's nobody saying anything. What was that? Turbo. Turbo? Turbo. Oh, now that's got me, I've lost words for that one. Yeah. No, come on, we can do better than that. I don't think anybody's going to buy into it. We've still got to combine these streams, so what are we going to come up with? Oh, Giles. Something very quick. I haven't got the Oxford Concise book here, Giles, but we have got the Collins. To look it up. <laughs> I see. Come on, I must be. Where, where's oh Ray? Now the the Glaswegian Greek uh, background that you've got you must be able to come up with a name. No. Tributary. Tributary. We're <laughs> well, combining them. We're not splitting them out. No. Confluence. More, 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 more. God bloody! I'm not going to tell you what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Multiplex. 
No. Is that a word you'd use 10 years ago? No. Well, no, you can't, can you? Not very democratic using words like that. Multi I'll go with, I think that's been around for a while, hasn't it? At breakfast this morning, we looked up what plex might be. And would you believe it actually means twining things together? So multiplex actually is a word, is actually quite an, could be an old word. Anyway, we need some multiplexes to join them all together, all these streams. And then we need your stream, we need your stream, and put it into an even bigger stream. A river of data? That doesn't sound too good, does it? What are we going to call a big pipe? Oh, I think I've given it away now, haven't I? So you can see, there's a, can you can imagine these people sort of 10 years ago thinking about what are, they gonna, what are we going to call these things? And, and they're almost everyday words now as part of it. If we go back to the, the talk now, okay? And let's step one, one, step, one step backwards when uh, we were talking about digital systems and how they might first come up. The broadcasting one was, was a big pressure, really. Yes, there was the internet activity going on extensively, but the terrestrial uh, people were thinking of MPEG streams, they were, they were uh, the same kind of streams appear in satellite broadcasting, um, been in use for quite some time. And, and, but it's a one-way system, isn't it, with the broadcasting? Essentially, there's a source, and then there's a, a multiple destination. It's a point-to-multipoint system. Quite a good idea, broadcasting really gets to a lot of people. Bubbling away under that, there were computer file transfer type people. Almost all of them were point to point in the sense that I send a file to you or you send a file to me. You actually make the connection and do a lot of handshaking and then you actually make the file transfer mechanism. Almost the reverse of broadcasting in a way. It wasn't point to multipoint, it was point to point. Yes, okay, they did come along later with mechanisms uh, for modifying the internet protocol so you could feed it to lots of people. But it still costs an awful lot of engine power to get it all together and, and feed a lot of people. Um, that's computer files and, and, and internet data file transfer. What we really wanted, if we wanted to use the internet, was something almost with the best parts of the broadcasting bit um, that we could use on the internet. And that's, that's partly where the word streaming uh, came along. I guess that's an, a verb or an adverb, is it, in the context of what we're talking about? Um, and what they did there was they, they, they came up with a system that took away this business of, well, uh, if I want to send an hour's film to you, I do a file transfer, you, you move it from this memory to this memory, and then you can view it, on your, but you're supplying the, the recipient end and the memory and everything that goes with it, and you have to wait quite some time, even if you do it at high speed, before you can actually see it. What you really wanted was something that was a bit like broadcasting. You press the button, and within a reasonable time, it does it progressively at the other end. And you don't really necessarily want to record it. You might want to view it. That's broadly what uh, streaming is. We've got to do some of these tasks as well when we do the streaming mechanism. My voice has got to be in synchronism with the video. Well, hang on a minute. I've got an audio packet here. I've got a video on here, an audio and a video on here. Somewhere down the line, I've got to join them all together and have some instructions in the headers that allow you to string it all together. How often do you see things going out of lip sync on the telly? Quite a lot. And the same potential exists for uh, um, streaming mechanisms. Associated text has sort of been amplified a little bit in, in the sense that... Um, you could think of encryption, I suppose, as associated test when you're doing your conventional telly. Uh, they wanted a pay mechanism, so they send some data along, and your receiver looks at it and decides whether you've paid your money uh, as part of the mechanism to, to view it. But there's lots of other information wanted. Um, people have ownership of uh, material, so you really want to say, who owns the, the, the material? Have you got the rights to use it? And how big it is, and all that kind of thing. So um, that's collectively uh, these days known as metadata. And indeed, this streaming mechanism we're going to go on to look at has actually got that built into it. Uh, we've done synchronization. Error correction is a bit of a, 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 long, a, a tall story, but if you have a, a, 
there's, I mean, apart from the over -air, uh, error correction on television type mechanisms where they deploy part of the payload so that you can correct for errors uh, over the air, the, the, the uh, internet mechanism has got similar arrangements, but it also had, because it was bi-directional, if it didn't get the material, it could say, well, send it again, please, send it again. Um, so there's quite a, a range of error correction tools. The streaming mechanisms have also got that. They actually have a, re a reverse signal. Even though you're, you're streaming continuously the information going out, there is actually a, a, a bits of information going back to tell them what kind of circuit you've got. Yeah, how does it cope with it then? Because it doesn't have enormous memories. But if it, I mean, if it comes across um, a poor circuit, I was talking to a colleague earlier, I can't see him here at the moment, uh, who was in Wales, and he was saying he was watching the streamer, and then later in the afternoon it began to become a little bit jerky. Um, and, I, and I suspect that that was the, the downlink going to him that was actually running out of, of data, and the buffer was then beginning to kick in. It is the downside of the streaming mechanism. You've got to have a reasonable... Um, pipe all the way down. Getting that out of the service provider, my no name's mentioned, is, is quite tough at times, I think, particularly if you're a long way from a, a good, a good uh, uh, stiff, high bandwidth pipe in, in the city areas. So what I'm, what I'm trying to do in this, in this democratic meeting that we're having is to try and get this, where does streaming actually sit in relation to all these other tools? So just recapping, um, what are the various... Conventional broadcasting. One direction. It's in real time. That's quite a good thing. Um, no interruptions allowed. I mean, if the transmitter goes off or you switch your telly off, well, you, you lose the material. Uh, okay, you can record it. I know that. But basically, the medium stops, doesn't it? So very much a point to multi-point. You, 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 a lot of you have got transmitting antennas or transmitting equipment, I should say, and you, you just feed that into the system. Okay, you may be talking to an individual, but lots of other people can get across it without any great difficulty. So it's a point-to-multipoint system. If you do a computer delivery, well, it's your choice. When you go and get the file that you want, that's quite an interesting point. It normally means you've got to transfer the whole file before you can look at it. That's a bit of a drawback. You're the one who stores the material at the recipient end. Well, that's okay if you've got lots of memory, but maybe you haven't, okay? You've got to put a particular piece of application on your computer, or, uh, sorry, application, and run it in order that you can actually view the material. Hmm, well, that's, that's all right, but uh, sometimes falls apart, doesn't it? And you have to go and reload the application if, if, you're, if you have a problem with the machine. And unfortunately, some of these applications that you run, you've got to have uh, an application for Apple, you've got to, have, you've got to have one for Windows and blah, blah, blah. So there's a, there's a bit more work to do before you can actually see this material, isn't there? So well, it's all right, this computer business, but you've got things to do. So where does streaming sit in that? Well, you can choose your time of delivery again. Well, that's a, a useful thing. Broadly speaking, it's real-time delivery. This particular system we're using here has, uh, the encoder's got about one, one and a half second delay. And then we are seeing through the network into the UK, all the way down to London in Docklands, which is where the server's located, all the way back up the system again, out through the Wi-Fi upstairs, and it's taking about three and a half seconds. It's pretty good. You probably say, well, I can cope with three and a half seconds to, to start and see the material. So... That's quite a nice feature. The new algorithms, the more powerful computers, allow you to, to compress the picture so that, very broadly, that camera you're seeing over there is producing a video bandwidth of about five and a half megs. And through various compression processes and new algorithms, we're squeezing it down to 200 kilohertz, the video bandwidth. People are watching this now, seeing 200 kilohertz out of, out of Sheffield. If we're, for producing that, that picture. You can't see it so easily there, but I'll show it to you later, okay? So very efficient compression mechanisms. Less bandwidth, you pay less money to the service provider. Well, that sounds like a good thing. 
It's got this bidirectional mechanism. It, it isn't listening to you all the time, but there is information coming back so that you can adjust the data rates and adjust your recipient system. So it tries to always maintain the circuit so you can see something. Okay, it might drop some frames in order, and it might go slightly jerky if your, your local circuit uh, runs out of bandwidth, but broadly speaking, it'll, it'll, it'll try and maintain that. And one of the nice things that happened is, is that the, the people who wrote the software for the players and related activity, they, they've, they've decided, I guess it's a commercial decision, to make the players, the piece of software you locate on that machine, um, for free. It's, it is actually relatively simple to download, although I think many of you may have downloaded it for lots of other reasons. This particular one is using the Adobe, um, Adobe 9, um, Player 9, Media Player 9, I think it is, on this one. And the encoder mechanism we're using here is the Adobe, Adobe um, Flash Media 2 software, which again is free. So, not quite better. Yeah. Well, well, why are Adobe in the business? They sell you the software that lives on the, the big server uh, in the middle of it all, and you have to use that server. And you, uh, the downside to the mechanism, if there is a downside, um, is you must put the material into this flash video encoding format. But the sheer volume of people using the players, using the software, now means that it's really, everybody's quite, becoming quite familiar with it. And it really has the dominance in the market, the, the flash player type mechanisms. You must work through their server. Well, all right. There are commercial providers like, like Camstream and Ustream and all these people who've got those servers in place and you can operate through them. And what and we're going to describe for the latter part of this talk, the BATC um, have decided to put one of these servers in Docklands to serve primarily the amateur radio community. Not particularly television, though it's clearly a television medium. Um, but that was the object of the exercise. But if it's a downside, you've got to work through a server. And the server software is relatively expensive from Adobe. Okay? Um, I don't know the ins and outs of, of why Adobe moved into this. I think there were, there were, there were strong connections with other people who were writing uh, compression software. And I think they've adopted that and come to a commercial arrangement. This, what, what, is this, what is this streaming software? Is it MPEG? Well, no, it's not really. It, it came from the, the, the other side of the business. You had sort of like television MPEG type streams, and then you had uh, more commercial mechanisms that were doing video conferencing. Uh, H, uh, and I'm using buzzwords here, but I can't avoid it, H.264 type compression algorithms. And in a way, you almost had these two broadcast type people going in the MPEG mechanisms, then you had all the, the um, other people going down the, the other streams. And they've moved on to H. 261. I, I really don't know this subject precisely, but I know H263. And I think what we've got here is a Sorensen derivative of something that's very close to an H263. And Peter downloaded this software the other day, and I see on it now it's got H264, which means they're able to do uh, much higher bandwidth. So although we're only running relatively small bandwidth here at 200 kilohertz, the, the encoders here can run the higher generation at H.264 and do a really remarkable job for something like five or six hundred kilobits. It really is really, um, really good software. So, who's, who's been using it um, as part of it? Well, I've got a, a frame here from Camstreams. The Camstreams um, server, I think, is located in Denver. I'm happy to be corrected, but it's in the States anyway. Um, and I haven't got the Camstreams main picture here, but you feed your material in, it actually goes through almost whatever you feed it, it almost converts it into this flash video type format or into a, uh, the format that they use. And then it comes back out to you. And what's happened here is that several individuals, um, including Dave Mann, j 8 um, simply took these streams, which you can get relatively easy access to, and thought, well, it'd be nice if you put them all on one nice big video wall so you can see them. Now, some stations missing here. <laughs> Um, but that, it's just me grabbing hold of the, uh, the picture at any moment in time. You can see the, 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 the repeater there from uh, Bristol. There's the, the one that's come up recently, the television repeater from uh, uh, Cambridge. And, and there are others as well. So um, quite, quite a popular mechanism. There's another one called Ustream. 
and this is just a small part of that as well. This one actually uses the flash encoding type mechanisms. It's got rather a, a noisy signal on from uh, GB3IV on the, on the Isle of Wight, but you can see here's some more repeaters that you can look into. Why do these people put these servers up for free? Well, what you're not seeing here is that there's quite a lot of advertising going on. Uh, there's a great many channels uh, on these. We've only picked off the ones that they've made space uh, for users like the repeater people to use. And, and when you first enter the, the, uh, the, um, the site, you, you can find yourself wading through an awful lot of adverts. Okay, that's, that's, that's life. That's how you get to use the system for free. What we thought we would do is that um, we don't, it would be quite nice to create a server that was particularly one that worked very quickly and was very fast in the UK. So the BACC decided to put some money in. We got some two or three uh, sponsors who funded the, the, um, the servers for us, which was very generous of them. And that's located down in Docklands. Um, and we're just beginning to run the site up. And this, in fact, this, this transmission here is the first live transmission that we've attempted. Part of it is to sort of stimulate interest and let people think about ideas, because we really want ideas to come from the amateur radio fraternity about how they can use it. Until you actually put this thing on the air, you know, but yeah, people can't always see the value of these, these tools until they actually see the thing running. So what we've got here is we, we're going to run a series of channels. So we've got a, a mixture of things going on here on the left. If you click on the, the film archive, there's a whole series of um, archive material, um, mostly it's from amateur television, is stored in the disk in the server, and you can access that when you want. You click on it, pick the program you want to watch, press the play button, um, and, and run the material from that server, you as an individual. You're not blocking the channel. It's capable of feeding quite a large number of people simultaneously because it's a big server. Okay? Um, if, if you want a cup of tea halfway through, you can stop the mechanism because it, it's got this reverse feedback, and then you can start again in the system. So it's got these nice stop-start mechanisms. Not intended that you should record from it. I'm quite sure in years to come people will find ways of recording these flash uh, files if, if they can't already. Um, it really is intended for you to be able to view the material. So it's closer to the broadcasting world that you're familiar with. Okay? We've also put in it um, mechanisms where you can go live from those repeaters that you saw earlier. Um, a number of people have already committed to joining this, this particular device um, and have come online. I think uh, we've got now, G I can show you all later maybe in, in the break, um, the GB3HV repeater. They effectively have a route on the input side, and it comes back out live, and you see it approximately three and a half to four seconds later, uh, which is very good in terms of transit time. We hope to put more repeaters on as part of it. This broadcast you're seeing here is actually on the live channel. It's the first one we've attempted. Um, and that's, that's, that's as, you, as you heard earlier on, Peter had reports from a number of places around the world, so it's been quite successful. A question from Giles. Well, no, I just, just to let you know, I just discovered that yesterday we had the average reported steps in Peter of 58.0. Oh, right. Some statistics from the metadata. <laughs> Giles is at, at the back, typing away. And, and he tells us that we've had some feedback saying we, what do you say, 40 to 50? Peak of 60 viewers at any one time. We don't know, you presumably don't know where they were. No, no because, the, yeah. So, first transmission yesterday, we, we actually didn't know we were coming to do this until it was only confirmed a week ago. So, getting all of this kit together and coming here and doing it and be sure we could get on the internet with a circuit that was adequate was a little bit of a risky activity for us. But here we are, it's up and working. So, uh, thanks to everybody who put that together. We've got some spare channels. There's actually, that, that amateur logic is actually some material coming from the States um, because we realize that this streamer can go not just into the UK, but could go almost anywhere. Um, so we're trying to give it a bit of an international flavor as well. We've got some spare channels. So come on, Democratic Committee. What, you got any ideas? Silence. Training? Uh, yeah. One of the channels we'd like to put up 
is maybe a technical training channel. Uh, we're happy to give the channel for free in terms of material, but the downside is you provide the material, okay? But you see what I mean? That's the deal, you know? We, we funded the server, put the thing together. Yes, we can do all of these things, and, and it's down to your ingenuity, or your ingenuity, um, um, on, on, out there in the network. So we've got lots more ideas. We can change this format of this to have more columns and more access than we're already... I think there's already a chat line on the repeater mechanism. So if, for instance, if you click on, on the repeater down to the Isle of Wight, there's a, there's a screen at the right, and you can actually type in and say you're watching or give messages or whatever. So there's already a text feedback already come in place, in place already, I should say, um, to do that. So it's evolving, but it's just down to our ideas and our ingenuity. We, we've got some sponsors up, so we've got a little bit of advertising. What's that all about? Well, the generosity of the, the sponsors who provided the rather expensive server and did all the work to put it all together, we actually, at any instant, don't know precisely how many people are watching. But we do pay for the data rate going out to you as an individual when you're watching. So please don't stay on there for 24 hours and go to bed, okay, because it'll, it'll occupy uh, more data rate. So we do have some costs that go out. So one of the things we decided to do is to put a limited number of sponsors which will help us to pay the electricity bill and actually pay some of the outgoing data rates as part of it. It's a bit of a risk for us in the sense that we don't know precisely um, what that will be. It's going to peak and drop. It's, it peaked yesterday at 60 plus. As people around the world begin to be more, know the site much more or start to look at some of the training material or whatever, then... So we don't know quite what the commercial commitment on our part so that is, but we're willing, the, the BATC is willing to do that because it, it does provide a new medium and we decided we would just do it and then try it for two years and see how we go. Okay, that's part of the mechanism. What's it look like? Well, I can show you this later. This is the flash encoder uh, that we're using down here. It actually isn't. This is the version 2. But you can see the bit to... Peter, I'm going over here, so... You can see here's, the, here's a, a means of selecting the video. The writing, it's not it's small lettering, so you can't see it super clearly. Running 200 kilobit. Here's the bits that decide the audio. You can decide whether you're mono, stereo, what the encoding mechanism in here. It multiplexes it. That word we didn't much like, but we're going to live with. Committee, aren't we? Yes. I've got some nods there. Committee's awake. Um, and then you can, you can choose some, some monitoring mechanisms here to get these screens. And you can see them, you can probably see them here on, on the screen. It's all running there live. Um, you have to have a particular address to, to get into the server, which is going to be kept reasonably quiet, which is probably a good reason why you can't read it. <laughs> um, and, and here's the data that actually logs into that server specifically to put the input side. It's a streaming mechanism. It's not a file transfer. Once I start the process, it keeps running. So you have a button here that says start streaming, um, and it runs the system. So it's not actually, that, that screen effectively is not on air. You have another screen, once you, once you press the start button, and you can see here, it puts up a stop button. Now, uh, it, should, it should be a picture here. It was the instant that I took it. There should be a second screen here. But it actually got some statistics here that tells me the quality of the, my line going up to the server. So if I'm having trouble delivering the material to the server and it starts dropping frames and things like that, it actually tells me. So it's this bi-directional bit again, which is quite useful. It's a limited bi-directional mechanism, but it serves a good purpose. Um, this mechanism here, the, this PC, one of the unknowns when we came to do Sheffield was, um, would one laptop of a reasonable speed be able to do the download. In fact, it, it's just on this part here. Look. I'll cut that one out of the way. Can't put it out of the way. Here's the part of the BATC screen you saw earlier. And here's the replay mechanism. So this decoder is quite happily taking it off the Wi-Fi, which is quite wide here at Sheffield. It's about um, three and a half uh, uh, megabit. So it was, it was no mechanism. And we've also put the encoder on this unit as well. It had sufficient power to, to do that. It doesn't seem to have too many drawbacks. 
um, on it at all. So we were quite pleased with that, really. That, that's the talk, basically, about streaming. Do you, do you feel, committee, now, you've, you know, where streaming sits in amongst all this television and computing mechanism? Yeah? That was the purpose of the talk, really, was to give you an idea of this new media and see where it sat in the, uh, in the hierarchy of the television mechanism. So, thank you for that. Here endeth Psalm 42. I know it's Sunday, and I realize I've taken you away from church. So... Here ended Psalm 42, chapter 1, according to the book of streaming. Any questions? Peter, um, does BBC iPlayer use a similar mechanism? No. No, that's the, that in a way, I guess, is the bit we have to watch out for. But we, we pitched to go with the flashing code. I, mean, was, I think the, the BBC, I, I don't know that particular one, but I mean, certainly the real players that they're using, which is what the BBC opted for. I mean, I'm not an expert in this, so I've got to be real careful what I say. Uh, but the, my understanding is that, no, it's not compatible. Certainly the real player isn't compatible with this mechanism. This one's winning the day. And we've gone with that one. It is one of the downsides to all this. You know, you've got, you've got to choose, you know. Peter, are you suggesting then, or, or asking people to, so you've got lots of space there at the moment, so not, uh, what, what was the mechanism by which um, somebody would think, I've got a good idea, my information's gone. They would contact you or contact you group, and then and you would want people to do that before you put something together, just in, want to discuss what it was you're Okay, do you mind if I just repeat the question so that everybody hears it at the other end, okay? Yeah, I'll try and say it a bit better. No, no, that's fine, it's okay, it's okay. I'm happy. The, I, the, the I question is... Trying, I guess I'm trying to get at the idea... Actually, I come down here. Of how would, you, how, how would you work this, Peter? At the moment, you would want... Uh, say a group had an idea that's quite good. You would really want them to talk to you first before they did anything? Or would you rather people put something together and, and then let you see it? Okay. And then, then you decide. Yep. Uh, the, the honest answer to that is we, we're trying to stay very flexible. Because it's new to us, it's new to them. Anybody who's come, we, there's a small group of people, there's about four people within the BAUC committee who put this together and are, and are basically hoping to uh, manage it and help people to get new material on. So approach me or Trevor Brown or any of the other committee members, and it, the message will get to us. We. We, we don't really want to prescribe it that, diff, that toughly. If you've got um, an idea, we'll, we'll think about anything, basically. But at the end of the day, the downside to it all for you, in a way, is you, sustaining one of these channels is actually quite difficult. You've got to have the material. Yes. You, see well, you see material on um, YouTube, for example, the people putting things up. What's the same? Be, um, how to modify a satellite LMZ? I don't know where I get that idea from. Well, no. Okay. More, more particularly, uh, the question there was, is, are we like YouTube? And I, I think the, the idea is, no, we don't really want to be like that. What we really want to do is to orient it towards the amateur radio uh, fraternity. So you, you, you talked about modifying an LMB. We'd love to have a video um, of, or, you know, of that, that work going on, a 10, 20 minute segment. Right now, we could actually put that quite happily if you, if you came to us with that, we'd probably put it on the archive mechanism right now. So actually, if you gave a disc to us, we'd convert it and top and tail it and make it into a flash video. So we'll do the donkey work in terms of that mechanism. But yes, we could put it up there now. If you say, well, I've got so much material and we want, I mean, the idea that Mike's coming up with is a, is a training channel. Well, that maybe that's the right place for it. But no, we we'd try and make that happen for you. More question? Is the software cross platform? Uh, I don't think I know the answer is the honest truth. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't I don't I would have to ask Chris who did most of the software. I don't know that much about it. Well, I mean, at the moment the message I'm giving out is well, you know, you can download the Adobe Play Flash Player 9 for, for nothing. Right? So it only takes what three and a half minutes to do it. 
the, the, the Ustream systems, you can certainly feed completely different platform material into it, and they transcribe it. I, and the reason why I'm being cautious about answering your questions, I don't know whether Alice does that. But I'll find out, and I'll try and come back to you, okay? I don't think it does at this stage. We, we, we're all, a, it's a voluntary organisation. Everybody's doing the work, either after the, you know, after work and all the rest of it, into trying to get the mechanism going. And I suspect it's early days for us, is the honest truth, okay? But I'll ask Chris. Chris, you're probably watching. It's a good question. Let me know. <laughs> a, a good commercial example of that is if anybody's looked at microwave office on their site, knowing that you're never going to be able to record uh, software uh, uh, stuff, but wanted to see what it did. They've got some really good training videos on there that were worth watching, and that would be our, that sort of thing would be ideal here on the on the amateur subject. So. Yeah. Yeah. We, we quite like the training one. How to organise it. Is, you know. I mean, there's, there are still copyright issues. I mean, whenever you give us permission to put this out, essentially you give us the copyright to do that. So you've got to be happy to do that. Um, but it's not a mechanism that's meant for recording. It's a viewing mechanism. So there's a different, slightly different situation. Copyright will always come into it. You can't just YouTube and other people are, are having problems in terms of people putting pinching material and then transcribing it and putting it back out again. Well, yeah, somebody else's material, isn't it? But we, we are assuming that we will go through the mechanism of ensuring we've got the right to use it. We'd have to do that. So, how, how reasonable is it to do it from somebody's chat? Say you wanted to broadcast something live. From you volunteering? Well, I could do. That sounds great to me. We'll help you do that. Yeah. Giles? Just had a reply from um, G1FEF. Chris. Yes? The, the uh, encoder software is Windows, but uh, there is a third party Linux version. Does it, that answer the question? Must be live. Got the answer? The back of the room in about, what, three minutes? Sorry, did you, did, do you, do you want to, just, I'll let you say that, because I don't think everybody would hear that. We heard it in here, but I don't think they'll hear it there. So, Giles has got to reply. Yeah, we're watching the, uh, watching the stream live in the back here. It's very sad, I know. Um, and uh, replies from Chris, G1FEF that the um, encoder is Windows based but there is a third party Linux version the, um, the, the player is cross platform um, yeah so there's no the, Mac version other than you spend lots of money for it so no Mac sadly. version unless you spend lots of money on it is that you can't get a Mac I've tried you can't get a Mac I can if I pay a lot of money Right. But there will be a free Mac version. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad because Mac's far better to use than Windows for this business. So, ooh, ooh, got the there. does that answer yes, the question? Okay. <coughs> that was quite impressed by that. I didn't get that answer that quickly. He's actually using a chat screen that's only come up in the last few days. Adjacent to the, 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 the player that's here, there's a little frame come up and people are typing in messages. So that's how Giles got that. Right. Last question, we finished or thank you very much.